Army specialist Jonathan Town is back home in Ohio now, but still very much at war. When you see bits and pieces of, uh, of actual people or people bleeding to death or anything, it's, it's very unsettling. It's something that you'll never, you'll never be able to forget, period. In the fall of 2004, a 107-millimeter rocket ripped through his unit's headquarters in Ramadi, exploding two feet above Town's head, knocking him unconscious. The echoes of the blast, he says, are with him to this day. This is what's always in my nightmares and dreams, this and, and other instances where my buddies had been killed and, and, and uh, just the carnage that we saw over there. The rocket attack left town with significant hearing loss, along with persistent headaches, memory problems, anxiety, and insomnia. For his wounds, he was awarded the Purple Heart. But when he returned to the States seeking treatment for those very wounds, the Army acted quickly to discharge him, asserting his problems were caused not by the war, but by a personality disorder, one that predated his military career. They basically said that you had a mental problem before he got into the Army. Correct. Based on, on what? Nothing. Did they ever question your parents, your friends, anybody from your past? Not at all. Don't you think people would see that as shocking? I, I hope they see it as shocking. It's called separation because of personality disorder, a pre-existing condition defined in Army regulations as a deeply ingrained maladaptive pattern of behavior of long duration that interferes with the soldier's ability to perform duty. I think it's disgusting. I think it's, it's, a sh it's shameful. Veterans advocate Andrew Pagani has accused the military of knowingly misdiagnosing John Town and hundreds of other combat veterans in order to quickly discharge troubled warriors and to deny them disability benefits. And it's tragic that a, a diagnosis is being misused and abused in order to, you know, pretty much get rid of people. Since 2001, more than 22,000 servicemen and women from all branches of the military have been discharged for personality disorders. Personality disorders that interfere with military service and are incompatible with a soldier staying in the unit, it's usually best for both the soldier and the unit for that soldier to be discharged. Colonel Elspeth Ritchie is the Army's Chief of Behavioral Science. But why was the military not able to see that before this person enters into the military we do histories and physicals on every recruit that comes in but people may not always tell us everything so if, if you see that someone's got a problem when they're coming out of the war you're really able to determine that this is something that existed before they went into the war it's going to depend on the situation so you're going to look at what happened in high school whether or not they made it through high school whether they had any problems with the law he doesn't have a personality disorder he was a good kid he never got in trouble it really ticks me off patrice meyer sent her eldest boy donald schmidt off to boot camp at 18 years old two tours in iraq later he returned a depressed, anxious, and tormented man of 21, cut loose by the Army with a diagnosis of personality disorder. They just slapped me with that label to get me out quicker. Schmidt earned a chest full of commendations for his service in Iraq, but came home plagued with horrific memories and was being treated for post-traumatic stress disorder. Suicide bombers are messy. Just bits and pieces, fingers, eyeballs, elbows, guts, bones. When his commanders decided he was no longer mentally fit for duty, they put him out on a personality disorder discharge. As soon as I heard from my squad leader, there ain't no way you're staying in the Army, well, I guess I better start packing. They were like, oh, yeah, everything will be great. Peachy keen. Well, it's not. It's not right that they would do this to him after him going to war for us. They threw him away. They're done with him. He's no use to them anymore, so they say, we're done. You're out of here. You don't get anything. Thanks for nothing. The discharge left Schmidt ineligible for disability benefits from the VA. And to make matters worse, he was required to return a portion of the $15,000 bonus the Army paid him to re-enlist. No one told him any of that, he says, until it was too late. So you sign the paper and, oh yeah, here's your uh, bill. Bill. You know, what the hell, if anything's going on here, they should be paying me. I'm getting checks in the mail, or letters in the mail that say, uh, I owe the Army 10 grand. 
Both Schmidt and John Towns say Army doctors misled them about the consequences of the personality disorder discharge. He said that you have PTSD, uh, but if I diagnose you with personality disorder instead of PTSD, instead of taking six months to a year for you to be uh, discharged, we can get you out now. The day I got discharged, they told me I owed the Army $3,000. That you owe them money. Correct. You got a Purple Heart, got sent back, left the Army, now you owe them money? Correct. I think the point when these guys get angry is obviously it's when I tell them that they owe money back. Until last month, Jeff Peskoff was a civilian employee at the personnel office at Fort Carson in Colorado. He delivered the bad news to Schmidt and Town and many others. I was getting at one point three or four guys a day getting put out with personality disorder. Three or four a day? Oh, yeah. In the span of several months, Peskov says he processed the personality disorder discharges of hundreds of combat veterans he believes were actually suffering physical and psychological trauma because of the war. They're actually washing their hands of them. They're pushing them to the VA system. They're telling them they're going to be going to the VA system, but really, in all actuality, they're not. Peskov, who served 10 years in the Army, including a tour of Iraq, recently quit his job in disgust and is now speaking publicly for the first time. Are you worried right now about getting caught for talking to the news, media, about this? I am, but I, th I think that's the right thing to do. If you have a combat tour and, and you're getting labeled as personality disorder, there's something wrong. I think it's just a lie. It's a lie. It's, it's a quick way to get rid, of our, get rid of that body and bring in a new body. And it's a quick way to save money. Officials at Fort Carson declined to speak to ABC News about Peskov's allegations or the cases of specialist Town and Schmidt. Eventually, Peskov began steering soldiers yeah. to veterans groups he hoped would help them. And these are the guys that went to war. These are our heroes, and we're putting them out that, that way? It's, 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 to me, it's criminal. And there are many more. ABC News spoke with more than a dozen Iraq war veterans who claim they were wrongly diagnosed, and to two mothers whose sons committed suicide after their discharges. I've seen this at every single installation that I've worked with. I see this across the board, everywhere. Have you been able to get the information of how many of those that have been sent out under personality disorder had actually served in the war either in Iraq or Afghanistan? We are researching that information as we speak. But isn't that been written down? Isn't that pretty obvious to tell which ones had been in the war and which ones hadn't? I don't know if it's obvious or not. It does take some research. A few months after his discharge, Jonathan Towns' story was featured on the cover of The Nation magazine in an article entitled, Thanks for Nothing. Could you make it and some so prominent people took notice. Sometimes you hear things and you just think, that's unbelievable. It's just the story I heard about this young man named John Town. What was the reaction from the people that were watching you? There was a, a just a sort of an explosive kind of feeling like I mean it wasn't they didn't start throwing things or or ruin but it just just changed it changed the mood in the room so absolutely I mean, it's a terrible thing and we all have to think about what we can do about it I realized that their reactions were outraged at the story town's story inspired 31 senators both Republicans and Democrats to write the defense secretary Robert Gates calling for an investigation into the personality disorder discharge some of the cases that I have seen as a non-medical professional, just scream out to me, this, this person uh, was railroaded. And Democratic Congressman Bob Filner plans to call John Town as a witness at a hearing later this summer. We just can't say, pre-existing condition, you're out, you're out of here, we have nothing further to do with you. That's a, that's a failure of, uh, of command responsibility. With all the attention focused on John Town, perhaps it should come as no surprise that the VA recently began treating him and paying disability benefits. Do you think you had something to do with that? Well, you know, I think the push, you know, I, like, I think the push, the, the, public, the publicness of the whole thing may have had some bearing on that, and if it did, it was, it, it's great that it did. But there's still a, a lot of other soldiers that, uh, that need to have the same attention paid on their behalf. At home in central Illinois, Donald Schmidt is waiting. This is Bob Woodruff for Nightline in New York. And today, six senators introduced an amendment to the Pentagon spending bill that would call off all discharges for personality disorder until the process is reviewed.